Hey Floss Tube friends, it's Lana, the Silly Notion Stitcher here on Sunday, May 12th, 2024. Happy Mother's Day to um, everyone, all the mothers, all the caregivers, and um, those who are celebrating today. So I know it's sometimes a bittersweet um, holiday for some folks, but um, hope you are getting in all the things you want to do today. So it's been a while. Um, I think I was last here in February, maybe. Um, so many, many events have happened. Lots of retreats, stitchy getaways, sewing and quilting. Um, there was an expo, there was a retreat. Um, so lots of things to show today. I have some, this is my channel. Hello, welcome to all those who are seeing me for the first time. This is my channel about cross stitch. And I also share some things about um, quilting and sewing that I do. Um, I'll save that towards the end and a little bit of life updates. So um, we'll save that towards the end. So I'm going to jump right in. Thanks for coming back and thanks for subscribing if you have um, recently done so. And um, I have some finishes to show you. So that's always very exciting. Um, I have two, I think, FFOs to show. And if you've seen me before, you know that I've been working on this um, Prairie Schooler button up series. Um, I started some of these during the last Winter Olympics. And um, this guy, I had this um sewn and then um finally like got the pillow made and got the pom-pom trim added so that's very exciting um it is a combination of oh my <coughs> lizard litter and um polyfill so this pom-pom trim, I love that at a local fabric store, I can get this pretty inexpensively off the roll. Um, we have a really fun, nice um, Mennonite run um, quilt shop that's only about 15 minutes from me. Um, it's Burke Holders in Lancaster, Lebanon County area. If you've visited there, you know what I mean. So. Um, yeah, so that's very exciting. Last year for some of the fairs that I entered in, I entered um, a related design of this. So this could be one of the things that I enter again. So we'll see. Um, there's a lot of pollen in the air. So I find that all of a sudden something's stuck in my throat and it, it seems to be just related to the very damp, gloomy weather we're having in southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, I live outside of Reading, and so I'm between Lancaster, Reading, Allentown, and um, not too far from Grace Notes Fabrics, where that is actually um, dyed and produced. And so I am going to the Grace Notes um, retreat in Allentown um, that is happening in August. So if you're going to be there, please come and visit and say hello. Um, it'll be fun to meet new people there. Same with Stitch New Jersey. I will be at Stitch New Jersey and that's coming up in July. So that'll be my first time going to Stitch New Jersey. So very cool. This is another FFO. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's just so quirky and fun. Um, this is, the pattern is Happy Little Camper um by oh is it fan not fanciful flamingo but um i think flamingo is in the name or or flamingo toes i think is what it is i love her um she has so many great um needle minders and um charms for your bags like zipper pulls so um what I did with this to finish it is um, I did quilt around it so it is a little bit padded inside. It's got some batting inside 
And because I do sew on the machine, I was like, you know what? It just needs something different. I really, I, I knew that I wanted to hang it from this hanger, which I got at Hobby Lobby. It had a spring metal holder stand or sign. So I just took that off. Um, the back is a fun um, road trip type of fabric, which is homage to the many wonderful road trips that um, we did when I was a kid. Um, my dad evidently was the creator of our road trip vacations. He would discover things um, back in the day reading the newspaper and get ideas. Um, we also had family that had moved to Colorado Springs and he, um, my mom had friends out in California and so they came up with this incredible road trip that we did um, when I was like 16. So anyway, we did not do a lot of camping. We did some camping, but I just love these little Shasta campers. So I started this when I was really just getting started with stitching. So there's a little bit of tension, wonkiness in the door. And I just, now I can like smile about it because I'm kind of like, you know, okay. Like I've learned and know a bit more now. Um, so and this was my probably my first back stitching I ever did and um, it really just started to make a difference when I was stitching those little colors I was like these are gonna look like flags like I don't get it but um, the back stitching just really makes it pop so and then it, it really just needed some heavy-duty rick rack so that is exciting and I have my, I showed this in my last video, oh, this is floss tube number 18, I believe. And I think in my last video I showed um, my intentions to hang some things on this sign holder. So I'm going to continue to use this as a finish option seasonally and, um, you know put things on here, switch them out is what I'm trying to say. So there was a Primrose Cottage Stitches, um, Christmas Trees and Stitching Please that I finished and that hangs on here as well. So it's, it's a really cute, you know, like sign looking type of finish. Um, I'm realizing that even though I'm going to give you more quilty updates later, what I normally do in my floss tubes, I usually have, I, I had to change the way I'm sitting a little bit for various reasons um, in my room. But um, once I get some things off my lap, I'll talk a little bit more about what this is. This is a bed runner. So, um, and it's got, if you're a cat person, it's got some wonky cool <laughs> cats playing with beach balls and sitting on their beach blankets and it's a hoot. So one of the finishes that I'm really, really proud of is this one um, by Luminous Fiber Arts. Um, so I was able to pick up that pattern from the StitchCon sharing table. And um, this was done with Belsois Watermelon Silk thread. I just love how it turned out. Um, the fabric color is pretty much what you're seeing here, like the modeling. So I wound up, <laughs> I guess this would be, it looks kind of small for a fat quarter, but um, that's probably what it is. Um, so I sort of like used up a crazy amount of fabric, but um, I'll definitely have some extra that I won't use. So this is a Lugana, but unfortunately I don't know what, which one it is. Now, I have been discovering a new thrift store and saw this tray a while ago, $2. It's sort of like a charcuterie tray. It's got these um, stands 
uh, feet that will open up. And I was like, oh, you know, it's a good oval, but it's sort of an oblong oval. Um, I don't know what you would call that if it's considered an ellipse or whatever. Um, but just this morning, before airtime, I played around with this and it's going to work really, really well. So it's kind of hard to tell so far, but um, of course I'll be um, doing a few layers, like probably um, an additional, I'm going to paint this, I'll do an outer matte board type of layer with fabric on it or something that I can do a trim um, ribbon or um, probably fabric. Although I'm, I'm looking at the, this border here, so um, don't want to create an overabundance of lines, but um, so I'll be able to figure that out. But at least it's a mounting option that was inexpensive and um, going to work really nicely as something different. And I'm thinking that if, if I don't want to just have it sitting as a tray, I mean, I definitely could do that and have other little things with it. Like I have my antique um, vintage tomato pin cushions and things. Um, the stands might open in such a way that I can lean it back and just have it open and it'll sort of be like an easel um, finish. So that is very exciting. I'm glad. And this was a pretty easy stitch. Um, I did leave off. There's a big thimble in that space. And I just, oh, is it there? Or I think it's over here in that empty space. And I just decided to leave it off. I liked, I'm not a big thimble person. So, <laughs> so that is that finish. And I had a few other Easter things that didn't, still didn't get fully finished. So I have that was from um, last year. I think the Happy Easter is actually from whilst Iris Naps. I think she provided that one year. And then I added the flowers and the stems from a Ukrainian design. Um, so I just added those motifs. This is an H from the Jingle Ball. Last year I participated in Teresa Kogut's class where she had um, those letters that could be made into little signs, little pennant um, squares, and um, she had it shown as joy. But I loved the idea of being able to pick the letters and do them for a whole variety of holidays and reasons and things. The H is as far as I've gotten. I may have done something for Christmas. I don't quite remember, but, um, you know, every stitch gets us closer to what we want to complete. And I'm apologizing in advance for going off screen a lot because I had my room um, repainted. That's one of the big things that happened in the last few weeks. So that meant rearranging a lot of things. So some of the furniture pieces that I had in here where I could sit things on when I was showing items to you, they are no longer here. <laughs> so um, I'm using my lap and my bed is a little far off in the distance. This is another finish. So I think I was probably talking about, um, and I think I think maybe when I did my last floss tube, I had done my visit to Salty Yarns. Um, I am fortunate to be able to go on shopping pilgrimages with my friend Kathleen, who is the Snickerdoodle Stitch um, floss tuber. And this was a piece of fabric that I picked up there. So this is probably one of the 20 counts that I picked up and I thought, oh, let me check out how, how that would be having a darker green, um, for this Brenda Gervais, um, design. And this is from her Jelly Bean Jubilee. So, um, I'm going to try to remember recently I've been seeing more floss tubers saying people are requesting that we hold up things longer. 
So I'm going to do that for you. Trying to find the right color of this fabric. It's, it's a little bit more of a rich green, but I do love how it's got just a little bit of modeling to it. I think it's a Weeks Dye Works, actually. Um, and it is a linen. I'm not much of a linen person, but, um, I mean, I love linen, but um, I have to stitch on bigger counts because I get myself into trouble. This is a recent rescue from uh, the same thrift store I was at and got that tray. Um, I thought this was adorable. So I didn't figure out the count yet. Um, I am guessing this is probably on 20 count Ada. Maybe it's 18, but I think it's, I think it's smaller than 18. Um, and so I have a Red Schoolhouse sampler that I am going to be finishing this year. And this will go with a cute display. I also have a September sampler that has sort of a school theme to it from Country Cottage Needleworks. It has books and apples and um, it has a house in the middle, which is kind of fun. Um, they all had houses. It was from a series from 2020. And it would have been a little fun to add a school bell at the top. I wonder if I could do that. But now I, I think I finished it last year. So I thought that was a good rescue. And this is how they finished it on the back. So I bet this was like a little kit probably done in the times when the Cat's Meow um, little wood blocks were popular. In this area in particular, I'm sure in many other areas, there were, you know, the people that were doing the knockoffs for craft shows, and it looks like somebody, um, you know, definitely probably put some sort of kit together. So that is cool. So I'm going to um, show you a few finishes from a friend of mine that um, she's asked me to do some fully finished pillows for her. Um, so that's exciting. I am actually headed to Florida tomorrow for, um, a little getaway. And so I haven't gotten to, um, really start these finishes yet because it's just been a lot of packing and planning and things like that. So I sort of have to get my head in the finishing space. And this is the first time I am finishing someone else's things. So that kind of adds a little extra element to it. But these are adorable. This is from the Brenda Gervais um, book that was out maybe two or three years ago. Um, was it Red, White, and Bloom? Is it, is, was that the book? Um, but adorable, adorable. So my friend Jill, um, this is her stitching. She decided to go with more of a navy blue than what the called for was. Um, and I really like how it turned out. Now on my camera, it's showing up really, really like almost blackish. But the, like I said, the lighting in here today is a little gloomy. Um... That's very cute. And the bees. There's a lot of bees um, that I have to show in my kidding up and haul. <laughs> Here is Uncle Sam. Adorable. Sorry, there's like a cat here. Let's try and get off there. Not sure if it's Jill's cats or my cat, but we um, just adapt to, you know, cat fur being part of the process. So, and then this one um, is the pinker and pumpkin quilting 
Um, so this is um, from Melissa, who does these great freebie designs for us. Love it. I told Jill that she's not getting this one back. <laughs> I definitely do want to stitch this. And I, I'm pretty sure this was one that I saw um, as an entry and a definitely, we definitely winning entry at one of the fairs last year. So that will be fun to finish into a pillow for her. Um, here is the blog info if you want to follow that and take a look at that. Um, she just provides so many freebie great um, I'm just making sure that, that this wasn't a paid for item but I'm pretty sure this is the person who provides so many little like salt box houses and freebies freebie designs so okay and then um, so Jill provided like fabrics that she is interested in um, for me to use as the backing fabrics um, she also has this one that she did this is one of the hands-on designs um, freebies for Valentine's Day so I think that's really cool to do it on, you know, a different type of color because this is like definitely going to be, um, you know, not just limited to Valentine's Day display. So, um, and then she has these lady dot designs. This is bird's nest, Rick Rack, and some shepherd's bush buttons that I'm not sure if these came with I don't think they did um, I, I wasn't sure if they came with the Brenda Gervais um, book but I don't think they did and then she also has a smaller um, this is Peony by Lady Dots uh, Creates and that will definitely work well with this. I grabbed both at the same time. So that will be exciting and I am planning on finishing these using my uh, featherweight sewing machine. So if you are a featherweight sewing machine user or owner, um, I'd love to hear that. Please comment on that because I am hoping to follow more people on Instagram that um, are featherweight users. So I just love mine and it's just so much fun and it's so easy to take care of. You know, it definitely requires um, maintenance and oiling because it is a mechanical machine. Um, but that's the cool thing about it is that the, the parts are so durable that you can continue to oil these machines. Um, mine was made in um, 1941 and it's just gorgeous. It's in very good shape and I went through a maintenance class and it is just doing super well. So actually I did the maintenance class and I haven't even really sewed with it since, since then. So I'm hoping to do some of that today. I'm hoping to um, prep some items that I want to make for table gifts that I'm going to be taking to Florida with me because I'll have to sew some buttons onto them and um, a few other embellishments. I'm making some needle books and I am making some ort holders. They're, they're, more, they're more so like floss beds that I will show in a little bit. All right, so please hold as I move on to the next bit of stuff that I have to pick up. Um, I definitely have haul. I have a lot of haul surrounding me, but I do have whips to show. 
So I have been working on some strawberry things. Um, I moved on from the bunnies and the spring stuff now and since it is May, I definitely wanted to try to have some strawberry stitching finished this year. This one might be one. So I picked up this pattern. Um, just at Christmas time, I went down to the shop in Cantonsville, Maryland, which is in stitches. And they always have a really good sale the week before New Year's. And so this was in the um, bargain bin. And it's such a lovely design. And I am totally loving this Lugana that I am working on. Oh, the color is kind of washed out. So if I do that, you get a kind of an idea. of the modeling. So this is a Lugana. This is a pretty big piece. I think this is, um, it could be weathered stone. I am not remembering if it's Atomic Ranch. I don't think it's Atomic Ranch. Um, Sorry, I can't remember the name of it. I think I got this at Stitch New England, at Stitch New England Retreat last year. And here are my strawberries to start off with. Now, it's interesting, I did not use the called for floss colors with this. Um, I'll show you in a bit, but one of the um, needlework markets that I went to um, one of the stands had, there's a, there's a teacher, a long time stitching teacher who had all these limited editions from a lot from Gentle Arts and she had them in bags for $5 each. And in each bag was definitely over 10 flosses. They you know, they're not marked with a color. They don't have a color name. They don't have a number or anything. So that's part of what the bargain is. And she's just trying to liquidate some of these things. So I know that one of the, I used one of the colors for the berries. So at first I was like, mm, is it really a strawberry color? It's so funny under my halo light, the colors can just sort of look, um, you know, they're so blown out because of how bright the light is. Now that I'm looking at this under just like regular room light, I love it. I love the color so much. And I love that I picked a lighter green. Um, I don't remember which green this is, unfortunately. It is an over dyed. Um, but I went by this picture. Um, let's see to see what it could be on this. There's a green with Envy and I think that's the only green that is the called for and that is a general art green but I know that that I, that's not what I used but um, I just love the combination together. So that would be nice to really like keep progressing on this so this may the, today what I need to do um, we fly down to Florida tomorrow we have to leave the house like around 1 30 or so so today is the day that I have to make my final choices of what I'm taking um, so this could very well be on the list this is a strawberry bag that I made sadly sort of chopped off the bottom of the strawberry <laughs> But uh, it's one of the first project bags I made. So, and then there's a Lori Holt. Cute little zipper pull charm on there. All right, and then what do we have in this bag? This was a bag, okay, so I'll talk a little bit about needlework 
So Needleworkers Delight, Needleworks by Jim, um, is a shop in northern New Jersey. It's sort of a virtual shop right now, but he does a lot of pop-up shops. Um, they closed, to my knowledge, they now have fully closed their longtime location. It was just, um, I think it was getting expensive and everything, but he does a lot of retreats. Um, like where he, he goes to other retreats and they just had their first market and it was in Pis Piscataway, New Jersey. And um, they had it very similar to Nashville Market where it was at an Embassy Suites. It was so cool because I haven't seen that market it is a an embassy, embassy suites that's only about four stories tall so he had a variety of vendors come in and they had their little shop set up and so it was a total combination of us being able to sit and stitch with people you know a dedicated ballroom open to us and then many vendors that were there so i purchased this bag and this is by um Creative Country Girl, and it's um, Tammy, uh, I think it's Blaylock. I'm having trouble reading that small. So um, I don't think I had seen her before. She might have her own floss tube, but check her out. She got started um, with StitchCon from what I recall. And she's got uh, a nice little business going for herself. She was a teacher and she had um, some medical issues that required her to stop teaching um, and be able to sort of pace herself and, and have this little side gig going. So it's really, um, I love the, the lace treatments that she gave. It's got a cute, heart polka dot thing happening in here, floss, ring, and the tag of course. Now why did I open this bag? I almost like put the bag down. So this bag is now holding all of my told in a garden um, patterns. This little <laughs> packet. My friend Kathleen is going to be like, there she is with all her bags. Um, I do like these organza bags. Now this, I got a pack of these. It was probably like in the wedding area. This business was going out of business and I got a bunch of these and I, I do use these um, to hold my floss. But right now they're holding like the whole project. So um, do I even have the picture in here? This is the... Strawberry Fields Forever, and I fell in love with this when I saw Brenda of Brenda and the Serial Starter. When I saw her, that she did this, that she introduced me to Told in a Garden. Um, so hers is done as a needle, like a project roll, I guess. Look at the little Amish people in the field picking the strawberries. And this like speaks to my heart because I do live on the edges of Amish country and Mennonite country. And um, I do respect their lifestyle. Um, you know, there's some aspects that are a little jarring. You're kind of like, really, is that is that really what they do? And things like that. But when you see the little kids... Um, and see them farming and their strawberries here in Pennsylvania are fabulous. So I'm a little bummed that when we go to Florida, I'm gonna be missing some of the real start of strawberry season because our strawberries rock. Um, I've had the strawberries in Florida and sorry, but they just, they don't compete. Citrus, okay, you know, that's fine. So I'm not going to do the whole pattern. When I first got this, I was like, I am doing it exactly the way Brenda did and everything. No, I'm um, so sorry for the um, folds. Oh, let me show you the back first. <laughs> mm. 
so there's my they've got faces they don't have their full heads yet this is I'm pretty sure this is picture this plus this is a Lagana called sand and sky or ocean and sand or something like that um I love it I just so I think by me um not doing I pretty much have decided I'm not going to do the farmhouse at the top oh my gosh here it is I think I am not going to do the forever and I might just run the strawberries all the way across there. And I think I will do the top, maybe also do that part, uh, the scroll thing at the top, but I think I'm gonna skip that whole farmhouse part. It's a little hmm, daunting to me. And I have so many of these that I just want to be able to move on with it. Now, one of the wacky ideas I had was to be able to do a drum with this one and just move these folks onto the end here. What I would probably do is try to mimic it on paper and see how long that would actually be. Um, what I do love though is the idea that because this is what you see, you have people that have a stand and then there's definitely stuff happening behind them. There, there are so many of these like chicken barbecues that they have in this area and in the background the kids are playing with the dogs and the donkey or they have like little um miniature horses sometimes that the kids actually will ride ride buggies on and stuff um so i do love the layout of this um but we shall see what i do so that is that one um I'll do a quick chart review. Um, here, I'll just show this one more time. I wasn't sure about the choice of the fabric for this. I was really starting to get stymied by, I have all these great Luganas that I've picked up along the way um, at these various markets and retreats and things. And you know, you pick them up because they're there, you find the count that you need, and you're adding to your stash. But ultimately then you need to be able to match them up to charts. And I was starting to look at some of these colors and I'm like, well that, you know, this chart's not gonna work with those and these aren't gonna work with that and starting to just really probably overthink things a little bit so um that was kind of starting to hold me back and I was I was actually like losing my stitchy mojo for a bit because we just had so much going on here with painting and um a variety of things happening so I feel like my stitchy mojo is coming back I think part of it is that there's just so so many things that I want to work on and then it starts to get overwhelming, but um, I feel like I do have some time today that I can, because I, I try to do everything all in the evening. So normally you just want to pull out something and start stitching on it. But when it comes to that part of like, oh, I want to work on this, but I have to pick the fabric and I have to pull the threads together and kit it up. Sometimes I feel like that slows me down and it's taking the time that I just want to be stitching. So um, now I have a little bit more time 
and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So that, that will probably become a little easier. So I have found these along the way. Um, Salty Yarns has a few of these and I think I found some online and they're typically only about $5 now. Um, so that's the quilting and what I intend to do with this, I may not, um, I'm probably not going to do the quilts in the back. They're just not quite my style. I do like that. It's very traditional, um, black and those colors, that quilt. I do like that. If I wanted to do that, I could do maybe two identical like that and just change up the colors. But what I'm thinking of doing for this one is doing this group of women and then on either side doing um, a small quilt. And again, with the idea that maybe I would do a drum or a stand up or something like that. Um, like maybe I would do that, that star, um, and I want to just do a little bit brighter colors. Oh, that little girl, and that's what they look like. They're always around and helping or just, you know, being around. Um, the other day was Ascension Day on May 9th, so the Amish community closes all of its businesses and shops on Ascension Day, which is a certain period of time after Easter. Um, and I passed a big field where there was a gathering. I don't know if they were playing kickball together or what exactly they were doing, but it was definitely outside and it was actually raining at that point. But I took a few pictures to um, capture the colors that they were wearing because I do see them in, even the men will wear like a brighter salmon colored shirt or mint green. They'll, they'll wear like the light purple and stuff. And so I want to use, I've pulled some of those colors. I didn't show that. I'm terrible with showing my flosses because they're usually a hot mess. Um, oh, I don't have it handy now. Oh, here it is. So I did put some of the flosses on this card for the Strawberries Forever because I thought it might help me manage these a little bit. And I did have to do some, um... substitutions types of things. I just have so much floss in my stash and I feel like I'm constantly going out to get new colors and I'm often, I don't know what it is, um, I'll go for certain colors and then they don't have them and then I'm still in the same boat. So I'm trying to get a little bit more comfortable with um, picking things from stash and just substituting a little bit. So these colors on the end are what I'm talking about, um, and I think we'll brighten up the shirts um, and things in the chart. It's a bummer because I had already followed the chart for the men's shirt where he's standing at the little jam, um, strawberry jam stand. Um, so I did make his shirt white, um, but it would have been fun to have done one of these colors, but um, I'll use them for for the other people. Okay, so um, I also have this farmer's market. And again, not sure if I would do the whole thing. And let's see. I have some of these in my little organza bag, so. Um, Blueberry Homecoming. I would just not do the house on that one for sure. And I would change up the colors in the quilts. Just make them a little bit more modern and fresh looking. It's interesting how when I see the quilt uh, choices that Mennonite women choose, 
they're, and I don't know if they do it for sale value, um, but they do make brighter quilts with more modern type fabrics. Um, and you can see these in the Kutztown, Pennsylvania area. You can see them in um, the Lancaster County er area. Um, so I think they just really use what they have, what gets donated to them. Um, and they're still definitely the ones that are more classic, like these dark colors. This is the auction. I am pretty much sure I'm going to volunteer to um, help at the quilt show in the quilt room at the Kutztown Folk Festival, which is in July. It's the only place on that property. It's at the Kutztown Fairgrounds. I went to Kutztown University, so um, I like going back there. And um, they have air conditioning in the quilt room, so I'll volunteer for that. So many people, I mean, the whole thing is run pretty much by, by volunteers, and it is always so hot. And it's, it's very dry there and humid. Um, but I thought, you know, I would like to participate in some way. So they are calling for volunteers. You help people um, look at the quilts. You know, the public is not allowed to. Um, they have they have this gigantic room filled with quilts that people have made. Many of them have been made by groups of people. Many are hand stitched, but there are also machine quilted um, quilts, and then they do auction them off, and. Um, the volunteers offer to let you see the backs of the quilts. Um, they don't want other people touching them, but I think the volunteers wear gloves and they'll they'll turn them for you. This one is Bird in Hand, which is a town um, in Lancaster County where I have shopped at the Log Cabin Fabric Store. Um, just very cute, typical scenes. Um, and this is one where I wouldn't do the whole thing as it is. Um, I would just probably pick certain motifs out of this. Now there is another one that I need to get and probably do the whole thing. And that's called the General Store, I believe. So that will be something I am acquiring. Um, and it's so funny, my friend Jill, who I am doing those finishes for, she's like, she'll see them online. She's like, you need to have this. You need to get this one. Oh, do you have this one? And it's like, yep, here's all the ones that I already have. So, but I, I do love them. Okay. So, oh, still doing whips. Hope you're still with me, hanging in there with me. Um, I started the next chart in the Beach Boardwalk series. This came out last summer by Cottage Country Needleworks that I love so much. Can't wait to see what she's planning for this year. I know that she did release something. Um, it looks like it's something with, unless that was Little House Needleworks. Um, so I'm sure there's something in the works maybe, but. Um, okay, so here's my ice cream store. That was last year. Oh, and here I thought I had finished it, but um, no, gotta put the sign on top there now serving ice cream and started my surf shop so I put in all of the ocean and the sand so that was fun um, that was while watching um, oh gosh oh my gosh where they race across the world <laughs> name of the show. My mom loves that show and also watching um <laughs> my god um it'll come to me. It's terrible. 
it's it's the Wednesday night lineup is what I was watching when I was working on this. This is Picture This Plus. Um, the modeling is kind of what is showing there. It's definitely, I pick this up and I look at it and say, this is mint green. That's what this is. And I think this is 16 count. So, um, Abbott Elementary is one of the shows I was watching as I was doing this. An amazing race. See? Got it just like that. <laughs> oh my. It's something else when your brain starts to disappoint you. Um, this is my whole seashore bag that I made last year. Um, I know that I've shown this before. This is the little pouch. I had extra um, and made a little pouch. And this is what is holding the floss for my whole boardwalk series. So I have that in here. And this is um, the thread bed that I was talking about that I'm making. Um, I've made these for little table gifts and then I have like my extra pieces for that series I store in here it's got little cute little crabs so the inside is just a very light flannel it's basically like children's flannel that people make pajamas out of or blankets and then the outer is a regular quilting cotton and a cute little button so it's a circle and so last night I was cutting out a bunch of these circles. You fold it in half and then usually it comes to a point there. Um, I just didn't fold it the right way. And then I have elastic and a little button. So, um, This has starfish on the outside. So I thought it was perfect to put in here with my boardwalk series. And I'll just show you a few other patterns in here that I'm planning to get to. Oh, this is my other whip in progress that might go with me to Florida. We will see. Or this might go too. I thought I could start on the wording and try to tackle that. Love the crab. He's holding his needles <laughs> in both claws. I picked this one up at Keepsakes when I was at StitchCon last year. So anyone who's watching who was going to StitchCon, I am envious. Um, I'm so glad I went. I don't know that I will go again because it is kind of a distance to drive. I'm sort of a little bit of a wimp about driving long distances anymore. I mean, it was about like seven and a half hours, so that wasn't too bad. Um, but you'll have such a great time. We had such a great table. We really lucked out last year. It was a, it was a lot of small groups of us that had none of us had ever been StitchCon, so that was really great. We were all sort of kind of the same, like not overly talkative, but just enough to, um, you know, get a good table experience and share the experience together. And um, so have a great time, you know, take in what you want to take in there and it can be a little much um, if you've not been to something of that size um, and they do quite a lot of different things there to keep you involved like all the time so um, but you definitely have time to be on your own you can go to the shop you can go have lunch you can go eat dinner you can you know leave as much as you want or stay as much as you want and um, the shopping was fantastic 
So it was just really cool. And I love the keepsake store for the purpose of being able to see so many models on display. The house, two stories <laughs> filled um, up to the ceilings with models. And it's, it's just really, really a cool experience. Um, this is my seaside tiny, tiny town. When this came out and I saw the colors, I just loved it so much. Um, I do love living so close to the Jersey Shore and the Atlantic. It only takes us about um, two and a half hours to get there. I also love going to visit areas of the Chesapeake. So um, this is my progress. And I started this at StitchCon last year. So I started this tiny town at StitchCon and I started the Harvest tiny town. I think it's Harvest. Um, I started that at the Stitch New England retreat last year. I am pretty sure this is a picture of this plus, but I have no idea anymore what the color is. Um, it's definitely an oddball cut, so I really don't know what it is. I have a feeling that I got it at Keepsakes, um, but it's definitely got a lot of cool modeling to it. All right, so we are really doing a lot of chit-chat about cross-stitch, like... I'm an hour in already. So, um, wanted to see if I could show you. There are some other whips that I really should try to tackle this year. Um, I started the some of the seed packets from Stitching with the Housewives. I was going to say Priscilla and the <laughs> Priscilla and the whoever, but um, Stitching with the Housewives. Um, so that's the Tomato Seeds one. And then I had this fabric that I really liked. This was a Lori Holt um, I'm trying to remember if it's like something with cream or what she calls this. And I used a bigger piece of it for something else. So I knew that I wasn't going to fit everything on there. So that's why I started this tomato seeds on this one. And again, sorry, but I have no idea what color this is. But it's definitely an Ada, probably a 16 count. And when I was starting to work on these, I was definitely into Picture This Plus. But evidently, I liked getting the tops of the seed packets started. So that's, that's as much as I have. Um, I know that I was working on the frilly cabbage. And there's a daisy one. I can't show them, though, because it's just the chart. But there's also a strawberry seeds. So... And I have those in this bag that I made. This is all like gardening focused. And I've got another Lori Holt strawberry. I typically only buy, the, buy like these charms when I find them on a clearance or like um, fat quarter shops, um, Black Friday sale, things like that. Okay, so I guess we are moving into haul, and a lot of my haul comes from the needlework um, extravaganza that I was starting to talk about. I think I got sidetracked there. So that was in Piscataway, New Jersey, where I talked about the Embassy Suites, and this was the first time that Jim of Needlework Delight, um, and I think it's his sister-in-law, run it and um it was just a really fun experience and 
I discovered banding there. So linen banding. Um, so let me show you what I picked up. So, pardon me as I grab several things. All right, so where I was talking about the teacher, I'm trying to remember her last name. If it's Susan Greenway, um, she's celebrating her 50th year of teaching this year, so. But she had a stand, she had a little shop, and she had these bags that, oh, I don't have them in here anymore, but um, they were filled with limited edition flosses from different companies that she probably, we think that she probably worked with to kit up um, projects that she was teaching um, in various classes over the years. So. They were probably extras and she liquidated them. So I got, it, it's really great because I picked up um, several pieces of 20 count fabric at Salty Yarns back when I did my little visit in February and that really eats up the floss fast. So this was like a nice bargain to have some overdyes on hand that um, they were you know, just very economical to still have over dyes and use them on a large count like that. Um, so a variety of colors. There was a lot of um, sort of like the chalk white types of colors and also browns that I picked, um, but then also some that were thrown in that were bright teal or, or aqua, I should say. Um, or bright raspberry, like what I used in my strawberry chart. But at her shop, she also had linen banding of all different widths and styles. You can see the um, sort of specialty edging. And this was evidently from a company that is sort of forced to go out of business now in Germany. Um, it's a company that's been around evidently 500 years, looms that are around, that were around 500 years. Um, some of the looms got ruined in that crazy flood that happened in Germany. I think it was just last year. And so the family has decided like they just can't replace the parts on these looms. So when, when these bands are gone, they're gone forever. Like they are now selling the last of what they have. So, I mean, this is, this is so, you know, modern trendy right now. And I see, um, being able to use this for some of the, um, B patterns that I have, um, summary type stitches, fall stitches. This was a piece that was just, um, I don't know necessarily that this was banding, but she just had this in a bargain bin. She had this roll of wool pieces in the bargain bin, and I do um, a variety of strawberry finishing. These I thought were great. This was in the Needlework Delight um, shop at the Extravaganza. I had never seen this before. So they are a Zweigart um, dealer for the US. And it's already like, you know, a finished shape. So um, really super easy peasy to put things in here and you could even potentially swap them out. So 
I picked a few colors that I thought would, you know, work with multitudes of things that I work on. Um, okay. I'll move on to Paul from the Lebanon Expo, Quill Expo, that was held the weekend of April 12th. So, um, and things have just been so busy that I had to put these, my haul, out of the way. So I just sort of went re-shopping again um, <laughs> yesterday and refound things that I purchased. Now, th this was actually from a thrift shop, but I had to save that. That'll be a nice little bag adornment. I might take this with me to Florida because it will be super easy to pack. I have one, but you know, why not have a second? So this was definitely from the expo. Oh my gosh. I, I splurged on this because this was a nice, easy way to, um, get these um is it Kathy Holden is that what it says right on there no this is um this quilt shop in Frederick Maryland which isn't terribly far away from me so I'm gonna have to go do a little visit there that would be a nice maybe little getaway for um some sightseeing down that way I haven't done that in a while um there's many historic sites down that way. It's really cute fabrics for, you know, backing and stuff. Oh, and this little bag was so cute. Um, this is made out of a vintage antique quilt. Um, so it's a little, little pouch. And I might use it for some of the things that go with my featherweight. I should probably try to put like either a magnet or some type of closure on there. Super cute. These are definitely like antique, um, like they almost look like American Girl fabrics here. Um, Oh, and some charms that really are from Hobby Lobby that this woman was selling at her stand. Okay, sorry for all the crinkling, but, um, nice spool and, of course, a vintage sewing machine. And then this is a Lori Holt Stork Scissors. I have one in teal that I love. And so I do enjoy putting them in a variety of bags, um, project bags, so that they are right there and available. Oh, is this one? Oh, this has a curved end. So, okay. This piece of haul was um, at another stand at that expo, so it does have quilts in it, but it is the Susan Ash Designs, um, so it's quilts and cross stitch. This one I really like, and I got the accompanying um, packet of Arafil floss that was at a bargain price. Um, this person was trying to liquidate a lot of her store, her little shop there at the expo. So I love that flag. I don't know that I would do the flower that exact way, but I um, love that. And there's some quilts in here that um, would be neat not necessarily in the color scheme that they're showing. So I think this was a nice book to, to pick up. Again, it's this. 
um, it was $20. It's an It's So Emma book, so um, you probably could find it at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, oh, it's from it's just from last year, so. Okay, now. Finale. I'm going to just bend down again to get the RFL floss I was talking about. So, of course, earlier I dropped the box and it was still sealed. Well, by dropping it, it popped open the glue. Um, but this is the accompanying floss to that book. The floss. I've really been wanting to try RFL floss and it is just lovely. So there are 10 spools in here and I mean they are just you know great colors to just sort of fill in and replace on different projects. So hmm. might I need to just go ahead and put them in my told in a garden bag. <laughs> um, but I want to be using them now. This, oh gosh, I love it. It, I mean, I love it in the camera. I want to see once the, it, it might actually be a little bit more red, but this could actually be the crab color that I need. I don't need it to be so white. Um, I don't know, there's another red in here, so that's a very good coral, and I need some of these colors actually for my bicycles that I'm working on from Sue Hillis Designs, so I encourage you to go check out those bicycles. I am on the hunt for a few more of them that she evidently was putting out, but I have my StitchCon bicycle and a few others. I think that bag is going with me to Florida, and I intend to do another um, Florida floss tube. Um, so hopefully by then, I'm, I've been really trying to pull together all the flosses for those bicycles and it's been a work in progress. I don't know, again, like why I have such a hard time pulling together some of these colors. Okay, so my final bit of haul includes um, some of my stitchy plans for the future. Okay. Um, these were also items that I picked up from the Needlework Extravaganza. This is Silk Weaver, um, Zweigart Lugana with the cute little flowers on them. This is um, <laughs> hand dyeds by Jim. These, the, he had some pieces there, and this is again at the Needlework Extravaganza from the um, Needlework Needleworkers Delight is the website, and this is called Newport Linen. Raw Linen, 28 count. And I feel like, you know, normally I would get a, a Lugana, but I feel like I can handle that one because it's 28 count. At that Needlework Extravaganza, I got to meet the Small Town Needleworks gals. Um, I know it's their mother and daughter, and one of their names is Kim, so I'm not sure if that's the daughter. I believe the mother is the main designer, and so it was really cool because they called out my floss tube and gave me some promotion in there, so I really appreciate that and got to thank them in person, so that was really nice. So I'm excited about some of these um, first designs that I picked up of theirs. 
Um, this Halloween house um, just was really cute. I thought it was just kind of different, and I like the banner at the top. I like cutesy Halloween, so that that spoke to me. Here's another patriotic. Um, they have a few series already, so I got two, at least two patriotics from them because one had one thing that I wanted that the other didn't have and all that sort of thing. I'm trying to find keeping their things together here. So this is one of the series that they have. So um, A Year in the Hoop. So I got this month of May, and this is definitely something I'm going to be kidding up today. Um, also these strawberries. I most likely will not be doing the months on there, so I'm going to need to figure out what I'm doing. This is not theirs. This is Cotton Pixels Gardener's Cat, and this was from... The February market. I have my little tuxedo cat guy and I just love this. This is totally him. Um, now I feel like I, there was another one of theirs that they had but this one was at one of the shops and um, so since it was right in front of me I picked it up and Um, botanical B. I have visions of doing this one and having this being a fair entry. Um, I just don't know exactly what color I'm going to do it on. I don't really have an intense blue like that. So that's what's sort of holding me back from kidding that up. Okay, this is this just threw me off. So I picked up the Any Town Tiny Town. So there were two that just recently came out. There's this Any Any Town, and this is the one that Keepsakes was able to release as an exclusive last year. I did not order it at that time. I wanted to sort of see it in person first. This blooming tiny town. I picked up as a freebie, um, I'm pretty sure I picked it up as a freebie because it doesn't have a price on it. It's on, it was on the, um, StitchCon freebie table. What's throwing me off is that I thought I bought, there is a similar Anytown that's sort of like a second release that came out at market, um, because she kept on coming up with some great um, shops and things, and I thought I actually purchased that one, but now it's kind of coming back to me. I think I just made the choice that this one was more relatable to me. You know, ice cream, of course, <laughs> shops with black cats. I love any sort of bookshop, any sort of coffee shop, flower shops. Okay. So, um, so anyway, the, it was just, I, I was expecting to see a different tiny town in this pile. I'm going to hold on to this patriotic stack because I haven't quite moved into the patriotic stitching except to say this is a must do. I just saw the similar one that was a Brenda Gervais design. So is this Brenda Gervais? This is Abby Rose Designs. And this is a definite must kit up this year. I just love that house. Wow, talk about the windows. It's a lot of windows, but that's how they are. That's how the colonial style windows are. So, um, but I, I do love, I always love bunting and um, that blue house really spoke to me. I don't think I'll be doing the crow. Like, mm, I've said it here before, I'm just not into the crow prim style, but 
that's just me um there was something else that I was still going to show. This was a gift from my friend Jill. Um, very nice. The blue flower. And this is the 12 Cats of Christmas. Free and cute. Um, I will be adjusting some of these to be more tuxedo-like. But I love cats and sweaters. That is a must-have very cute. So thank you, Jill, again. That was such a nice surprise. Um, I feel like there is something just super critical that I'm forgetting to show you. But um, so a few life updates before I go. So this I just wanted to show you. This is a bed runner I made about a year and a half ago. Um, I saw this panel and just thought it was so cute. I'm not usually into like these photographic, I don't know, these photographic things that are made into illustrations on panels. It's just not my thing, but you know, cats on the beach in bathing suits. I just had to, I had to do it. Oh, and there's one in her bikini there playing with the beach ball. So, pretty funny. Um, oh, and this one. So, it is um, backed with this fabric so that I can, I can easily have something that's a little bit more normal. My mom and I would like to look for sea glass there for a few years. We were doing that regularly, so I found this sea glass fabric, sort of made it as a, hey, they're hunting sea glass on their beach. Funny stuff. The quilt behind me has cats on it. I think I showed that in the last um, floss tube. Um, quilts are really good for lots of things. Keeping you warm. Having a lovely picnic. Covering up clutter. Um, but... Seriously, like I do hope to make charity quilts in the future and they do go to charities that people actually do use them to create rooms for, you know, if there's large groups of people living in places, they use them for that purpose as well. It, like say if they're in a hot area that they don't really need them for blankets they they do use them for other purposes so um yes in my life update um i like i said i was able to go to salty yarns that's in ocean city new jersey it's really in the town of berlin not new jersey Mar maryland um it is now really technically in the town of berlin maryland just the outskirts of berlin maryland so i did that in February. Um, then in March is when I went to the Needlework extra Extravaganza in Piscataway, New Jersey. They are going to have it next year again, but it will be in April. So check that out. And then in the first week of April, I got together with some really good friends of mine um, for a quilting retreat. Um, we go away for about four days and we're able to spread out our stuff. We go to a place that is dedicated for quilting and sewing people who are going to stay there for a few days and work on projects. So we bring whatever we want to work on and there is a shop right next door. We can either walk to it or it's just a short drive um, if we need, you know, extra fabric, yards and yards of extra fabric, which we always seem to meet. So we do that. And then the very next weekend, I got together with a few of that same group um, at the Lebanon um, Quilting Expo, which was a very nice um, expo this year. It um, has had some trouble like 
dealing with some of the fallout because of COVID and things like that and, and needing to find an appropriate space, but they had some really decent classes there this year. And um, I did do a featherweight maintenance class, purchased a nice um, extension table for my featherweight. So for those of you who sew or quilt, you know that if you have a portable sewing machine, having like a little extension table is really helpful for those bigger pieces that you're passing through the sewing machine. I'm really excited to be watching more um, YouTube channels out there that are dedicated to featherweights um, just to keep learning and I have been discovering the channel for the featherweight doctor. I love her. I love her style. I'm very tempted to join in and go to the retreat she's having, but she's all the way out in, I believe she's in Idaho. So it would be quite an expensive trip. It's coming up in early June, so I don't think it's going to be happening, but um, it's very tempting because it's like at least 23 to 25 people getting together in her long arming quilting shop and where she services featherweights and everybody's going to have their featherweight there and humming along with a project. What I'm really looking into now is I want to be able to quilt on my featherweight. The featherweight machine is literally like this big. Um, it's very petite and um, you can't really pass a large quilt through there. You can do little wall hangings, you can do table runners. But I want to look into, not really look into, but I want to do quilt as you go blocks and make a quilt that way on my featherweight. Um, as I would sew the blocks together and the rows get longer and longer and the quilt gets bigger as you're doing that, I would probably have to then move it over to one of my other machines. But, um, but it's really exciting to think about, you know, putting pieces together and then doing quilt as you go, which means that you're putting your quilt sandwich together all as a manageable block. So um, a smaller block can ease, more easily go through that machine. Um, so I think that was all of my retreats. And then... Um, when I was at the expo, that was the weekend of April 12th. So then I went to work on April 13th and was informed of that my contract with um, the staffing company I was working through, my contract was going to be ending earlier than expected. So I was supposed to be working through the end of June, but the, the company that I was working for has been going through some cutbacks. So um, they ended some of the contractors a bit early. Quite honestly, I was relieved. <laughs> um, it was a little bit troublesome the last few months um, there, and I was ready to move on. I, I did what I needed to do there, and it was a great experience, and I'm very thankful for it, but I'm looking forward to new opportunities. I'm starting to look at a few things and rethinking my work side of myself. So, you know, I've traditionally always worked more corporate type jobs, Monday through Friday, the eight to five, the eight to six grind, and many, many years did long commutes and things like that. So it's been really great being able to work remotely. And, um, I want to get a little bit better about, um, walking and incorporating it incorporating exercise into my day. So we decided, my mother and I decided we were going to go to Florida for um, a little break and we are leaving tomorrow. And so that will be exciting um, doing that for um, a bit of time. And um, I'm looking into some, um, they will be like online opportunities and um, so we'll see what happens from that. I'm also considering um, some consignment uh, types of opportunities where I can make some things and have some different shops 
um, sell them. That's not going to make me a lot of money, but it's going to be um, using some of my stash and doing something that I enjoy. So looking into that, um, the health insurance thing has been an issue. It's, it's all smoothed out now, but um, it made sense to convert to Cobra. So I'm using the same insurance company that I've had for the last four months and paid my, my deductibles toward, um, and just convert that to Cobra. So there was a little bit of like syncing up that had to happen. And I had some problems with some prescriptions, but got it all smoothed out. Um, so that has taken time and, um, you know, just trying to get things uh, ready for being able to go away, getting a pet ready, um, a senior pet, and getting him s squared away. So anyway, um, that's what's happening here. We had some painting done, and um, so it's been a lot of like shuffling things around and realizing that I do have a decent stash and I have to figure out how to better store my items. So I have been watching some floss tubes that are new to me and I was delighted to find a new floss tuber that um, she seems to have at least two floss tubes out there. I could not find her name today because I watched her on a different device. So I'm going to find her, but she um, has a lovely Jamaican British accent. I believe she lives in England. I think she said she was from the Midlands and she is a um, multimedia artist but she loves to cross stitch and she does a lot of H-A-E-D's. Is that just Hades? Is that how you say that? <laughs> she just I just loved listening to her and um, and then she so she goes to art shows to sell her work and so while her husband, her husband sounds like a delight, he's off selling her stuff for her and she's doing her floss tube from her caravan that they have in England, which I love. So they go RVing around and so she was doing her floss tube from her caravan, which looked delightful. So she's my new fave. She's my, I'm going to be like totally stalking her on floss tube. I will find her name and floss tube and put it in my description. And um, there were a few others too that I've been watching. So I will look them up and um, put them in the description because I'm terrible with just quickly coming up with it and I didn't, I didn't write them down. So wow, this is like an hour and a half long now. So I'm going to sign off and say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. And um, I will see you next time, possibly from the Florida studio. Bye. Happy stitching.